in heaven's name did you hit her for? How many times do I have to tell you I didn't strike her? I never harmed her. She's had a broken arm, hasn't she? Maybe so. But it has nothing to do with me. You're finished. You know that. I am not finished. Confound it, man. My whole career is thrown into this election. Well, what do you propose to do? Pay her the money she asks? Two thousand pounds? Don't be ridiculous. Now listen to me, Jeffrey. The party is depending on your seat in the Commons. If that woman makes a public statement that you'll tax her and broke her arm, you'll be lucky if you get one vote. And it makes no difference that I happen to be innocent. But wit! In your position, an accusation is just as damaging as a conviction. You've got to withdraw. No. Very well. I'll do it for you. I'm going to fight for my very life. I know someone who might help me, even if you won't. You've got three days to clear this matter up or get out. On Sunday evening, I'm going to make a statement, one way or the other. I thought you were my campaign manager. Not my accuser. Three days, remember. Marriage bureau. Idiot. So I went to a marriage bureau. She seemed a very charming sort of woman, cultured and good background and all that. Yes, but I... A marriage bureau? Yes, I've lived in the country for a long time now. I just never seem to meet any woman except the most ineligible and unattractive ones. <laughs> I've been lonely these past few years since my wife died. This bureau seemed reasonable enough. After all, they promised to introduce you to ladies of cultural and intellectual backgrounds similar to your own. But they didn't um, mention blackmail. Two thousand pounds, you say? An impossible sum. Even if I were guilty, which I'm not. My whole career is at stake, Mr. Holmes. I think it might be a good idea to have a look into this marriage bureau. Don't you agree, Watson? Yes, I'd say so. I simply can't believe Mr. Oliver, he's the proprietor, could be involved in this. And you say you have three days to pay or disprove the accusation, eh? Yes, Mr. Holmes. It's not very long, I know. Hmm. It isn't getting any longer. I suggest that Dr. Watson and I start our investigations immediately. Howard! Ah. Oh, no, there must be another way of doing this business. We're working against time. This is the only way we can get to the core of the case. Now, now listen, listen, listen. Now, 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 now listen. Uh, you go on in, and I'll just wait here, you see? But I'll be here if you need me. Oh, absolutely no use to me at all out here. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on, Watson. Come on. <laughs> Good afternoon, Constable. Beautiful weather we're having, eh? <laughs> same questions to you that I put to your friend. I realize they're rather personal, but it's the only way we can be certain that all clients are protected and properly matched. Yes, right, right. I can understand that. Now, about your financial situation. Well, this is all routine, you understand. Yes, yes, I, I suppose it is. Um, well, uh, my um, personal income is in the vicinity of... Um, Three thousand pounds a year. Well, uh, that seems quite ample. Ah, is that, that, that's quite apart from uh, Aunt Agatha. Aunt Agatha. <laughs> She's worth thousands of pounds. Hundreds of thousands. And your VA? Next in line. Oh, a favorite, too. Well, they have been since I was, um... You're... you're very fortunate. Mm, a very odd coincidence has occurred today. 
The very first time it's happened, I can remember. But there are two charming ladies here at this very moment who seem to fit perfectly with both your backgrounds. I think we can have our first introduction immediately. Is anything the matter? No, no, no. I was just admiring your um, Toulouse Lautrec. My what? Uh, your Lautrec. It's uh, very interesting. The, 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 the painting. Oh, the painting. Oh, of course, of course. Well, if you'll excuse me for a moment. Your um, Toulouse Lautrec. My what? Uh, your Lautrec. It's uh, very interesting. The, 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 the painting. Oh, the painting. Oh, of course, of course. Well, if you'll excuse me for a moment. I'll see if the young ladies are still here. I say, Holmes, what was all that whispering about? My, uh, financial position. But that confounded busybody asked me the same questions. I answered them straight out. No, but you gave them real information. They'll never try and blackmail you, old boy. Well, gentlemen, everything's worked out perfectly. The ladies are waiting in the salon where we generally introduce our couples and let them have a uh, get acquainted chat. My secretary is there with them, and she will introduce you. Um, the door at the far end of the hall. Thank you. Well, Watson, come on. Hmm? What are you waiting for? Go on, go on. The door at the other end. No, no, no. Straight on. Straight on. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Hmm. I'm always interested in the welfare and the situation of my clients. And, uh, yes. How old is Aunt Agatha? Ninety-four. Uh, tell me, uh, Miss... Uh, Miss... Um... Pamela. Pamela. All right, sir. Charming name, perfectly charming. <laughs> now, then tell me, Pamela, do you prefer living in the country or do you like living in London, huh? Oh, I like living in the country, then. Do you really? Well, so do I, as a matter of fact. I love the country. The thing I like most about the country, I think, is the uh, early morning ride. Really? Uh, yes. Uh, do you ride? Uh. Oh, did he? Not really. You've never really been to Paris? Yes. Oh, oh, you'd adore Paris. My Aunt Agatha always went in September, you know. She said it was quite sinful not to go to Paris at all, uh, without going in the spring. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, boy, I'm so sorry. I hope I haven't shocked you. Oh, no, no, of course not. Oh, good. And uh, Sir Charles was furious, of course. Well, he hates to lose a wager. But uh, did he pay you the, the 500 pounds? Oh, of course. On the spot. Why wouldn't he? Why don't you say something? You have very pretty eyes. Oh, you're a romantic one. <laughs> Well, has everyone become acquainted? Oh, we've had ever such a lovely chat, Mr. Oliver. Splendid. It's nearly time for us to close the bureau, so I must ask you to leave in a few moments. But first, in accordance with our policy, I want to encourage all of you to know each other. Might I, for instance, suggest that all of you have tea together tomorrow? And then, perhaps, um, go to the theatre. That is, of course, if it suits everyone's convenience. Oh, that would be lovely. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes, perfectly delightful. Excellent. Well, I will allow you some minutes to make your preparations, and then, I'm afraid, we must close the office. Well, I see it through, Holmes. <laughs> what do you make of it all? Nothing I didn't expect to. We were merely planting seeds, Watson. 
planting seed. Yes, it's my theory that if Oliver and the others are blackmailing, they're choosing their victims pretty carefully. However, I hope that at tea time tomorrow, we'll be able to obtain more evidence in support of my theory. The trouble is that our client can't wait very much longer. Uh-huh. You were telling me about your musical background, Mr. Holmes. I- I'm afraid I interrupted you. Well, there isn't very much to tell, really. I've spent a considerable fortune on my musical education. But what instrument was it you think you played? The violin, my dear. The violin. Uh, at times, rather brilliantly, I've been told. <coughs> oh, dear, do be careful. <coughs> followed you this time. Oh, oh Charlie. Oh, no, I beg your pardon. Oh, oh no, don't. Don't. Stay out of it. Don't. Don't. Oh. Wait a minute. So, you're the one. Oh, Charlie. What have you done to him? The police. Somebody get the police. He's my husband. This man, this man here. I saw what he did, ma'am. You better not try any more tricks, mister. The police will soon settle you. But this is outrageous. You don't understand. But it's true. It's true. They're married. And he was trying to break them up. I know his type. In here, constable. There's your man. Holmes, Holmes, why don't you say something? You can't do a thing like this happened to you. We've fallen very neatly into their trap. Don't you agree, Watson? Fallen very neatly into their trap. Don't you agree, Watson? Well, everyone seems quite thoroughly in agreement, except, of course, your friend here. These other witnesses are in full accord, and the testimony of the proprietress of the tea shop supports them. But, Inspector, this is absolutely outrageous. Where's Inspector Lestrade? He'll speak, for Mr. Holmes. Inspector Lestrade. I'm sorry it isn't Inspector Lestrade's case. Well, I think we have everything we need now. Here you go. Except, of course, Mr. Holmes. He's under arrest. I waited for something like this. Assault and battery. You should stick to your magnifying glass. Oh, I'm having a straight by Jed. I'm glad you're here. Oh, I was just seeing our more dangerous criminals were properly guarded. You were right, Holmes. Oliver called on me and told me that for four thousand pounds this case would be quietly dropped. Why he's insane? He's not insane, wasn't he? Just greedy. No, he's insane. He kept on saying it. He was sure Aunt Agatha would fix it. Aunt Agatha? Four thousand pounds? What are you talking about? Well, I'm not sure myself. Well, listen, Watson, now that we know where to look, we can take them quickly. Only you've got to let me out of here, Lestrade. Oh, what's the matter, Holmes? This is one of our more comfortable jails. Oh, listen, Lestrade, a man's life is involved in this. Jeffrey Bourne, candidate for Parliament. He's been blackmailed by the same group. We can stop them now, and you've got to let me out of here. Well, I didn't know it was serious. This isn't my case. I'll have a word with Mason. He's seen your arresting officer in this job. He's the only one who can let you out of here without a court order. I'll see him right away. Well, hurry up, Lestrade. Jeffrey Ball has only got until 7 o'clock tonight. But you will release Holmes. No, now, look here, Mason. I've known Sherlock Holmes for a very long time. I know him as a valuable colleague. If he says this marriage bureau is a fake, if he says they're blackmailers, then undoubtedly they are blackmailers. But there is no case of any kind against the marriage bureau, Lestrade. If one arises, I'll investigate it. But I will not jeopardize my position by taking such a step without cause. As for Mr. Holmes, he has been formally accused. And the number of witnesses more than justify an arrest. All right, Mason. But this is outrageous, Lestrade. Didn't you explain? Everything, Dr. Watson. Right. I'll handle this case myself. You, Dr. Watson? Unless you care to come in and help me. Well, I'll do what I can, of Look, course. Watson, there's only one thing to do. You must break into Oliver's office, go through his private files and everything. There must be further evidence of their activity. I break him? That's against the law. Look, maybe I could get a search warrant. Oh, how soon, Lestrade? Oh, 
the pitiless of Sunday. Certainly oh. not before Monday. Not with Mason here. Yes, but look, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Bourne only has until 7 o'clock. Yes, but breaking and entering. That's a crime. Have you any idea what the penalty is for that? Yes. If I remember correctly... Thank you very uh, much, Holmes. I'd rather not know. Excuse me. Watson's working on the case with all his energy at this very moment. be a cylindrical lock with multiple tumblers. And that's quite a different story. Each of the tumblers operates at a different height. It's an absolutely tremendous task, Watson. Well, what are we going to do? Well, there's only one thing for it. Smash the lock, of course. Well, of course, smash the lock. Miss Strange, if you had blackmail records to keep, and they might be dangerous, where would you hide them? Uh, let me see. Well, blackmail's liable to turn into a running game at any time. I suppose you want them to be portable. That's good. That's perfect. I want you to go after Dr. Watson immediately. To the office? I couldn't. Tell him to ignore the files. Tell him to take all the paintings down off the walls. Open the backs and tear them apart if necessary. Paintings? Yes. Oliver's office had one wall covered with paintings. Mostly Lautrec. And he hadn't even heard of him. Well, neither have I. Oh, go on, hurry the straight. Go on. Go on. start. I gave you a start. Look, Holmes says not to bother any more about the files. What? No, he says try looking behind these pictures. Looking behind? Here, you try that. Nonsense. Nerve-wracking enough without you beginning to hear things. Lestrade! Look! That's it. I just spoke to Mr. Holmes. 
said he'd be sure to have something by six o'clock. I hope so, Jeff, for your sake. I hope so. Your eyes are not so pretty. I told you I heard something. Who's been in the... Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard, eh? What are you doing here? Well, I, uh, I, I, I... Oliver, you interfere with the national election for one thing. We've got to clean up those files. We'll take care of them later. Edna. Listen to what I'm telling you and see if you can do it right. Stand right here. And if either of them makes a move, scream. Can you do that? Yes, Mr. Oliver. Good. She's awfully stupid, but she can scream. All right, Mr. Holmes, what's the meaning of this message? It refers to a blackmail gang operating through a marriage bureau. I've heard that accusation before, but so far I've seen no evidence to support it. Inspector Lestrade has evidence? Inspector of trade? Yes, he's already set out for the marriage bureau to make a clean arrest of the entire gang. But it isn't Inspector of trade's case. If he had evidence, he should have brought it to me. Well, I thought of that anyway he went, and according to my calculation, he should have been back by now. However, I think he may have run into some very serious difficulties. Well, strict regulations regarding such things. Hmm. When he gets back here, I'll talk to him. You can do better than that. But they can be yours, you know. What do you mean? Go to the marriage bureau yourself and take charge. After all, it is your case, you know. Order a squad of men to get ready. Have them meet me at the side entrance in five minutes. <laughs> She's a pretty girl, this red. What? You know, the straight, I'm so surprised that any girl who's so lovely and so intelligent could be kicked around by a cad like Oliver. Do you really think I'm pretty? Oh, oh yes. I, I, from the very first moment I saw you. Uh. Yes, I think. Oh, w wouldn't you like to sit down? You must be tired standing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you... Yes? You have the most lovely hair. Oh. <laughs> really, it's... Uh, I wonder... My hands are awfully uncomfortable. If you could be a dear, ease them a little, could you? Or... <laughs> oh, something amusing? I know I'm stupid, but not that stupid. Oh, are you ready to go, Mr. Oliver? Ah. Well, Inspector Lestrade? Oh, no, I'm not Mason. Where are you going? Mr. Bourne before seven. I've got to get there. Go ask him and untie his hands. I never saw such a Sunday. <laughs> Inspector Mason. I, I know, Lestrade, but I had to get you out of there somehow. I was better off as I was. Well, I considered that, but uh, despite the injury to your pride, you know uh, it's best that way. I know nothing of the kind. 
It was only a matter of a few moments before Dr. Watson and I had the situation completely under control. Well, you must tell me the story. In the meantime, uh, now that the criminals have been arrested, please let me out of here. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry. But this is Inspector Mason's case. I couldn't possibly interfere with another colleague's affair. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> oh Lestrade! 